Okay, so this is the next problem. Uh, a uni processor computer system has only two processors. Okay, so there are only two processors, both of which alternate 10 millisecond CPU burst with 90 millisecond IO burst. Okay, so what's happening is that for both of these processors, for 10 minutes, 10 milliseconds, the process will run on CPU, and for next 90 milliseconds okay so for 10 milliseconds the process runs in CPU and, the f and for the next 90 milliseconds the process uh, does IO input output okay both the processes were created at nearly the same time so the both the processes are start at the same time the IO of both processes can proceed in in parallel okay so for both of these processes the input IO the input IO uh, output can go in parallel okay for CPU it cannot be parallel because there is only one CPU but IO can run in parallel and which of the following scheduling strategies will result in least CPU utilization over a long period of time so you have to tell that which of these processes will give least CPU utilization and and we have this first come first serve shortest remaining time static priority sh scheduling okay all these things so what we will do we will look one by one for both of these uh, or for all of these and see what happens okay so I'll just make this timeline first so that uh, it's easier to see what's going on after that okay so so suppose this is zero and we know that all these processes start at zero okay and uh, let's talk about first come first serve first okay so we are talking about first come first serve that is option A first and what happens is suppose we'll name these processes p0 and p2 p1 okay so these are the two processes so so what will happen in first come first serve so suppose p0 comes first so for first 10 milliseconds okay p0 will run out here okay in the cpu and then it will start its io okay so then it will what will happen the cpu will uh, get p1 okay for another 10 pu will be running okay but what you should know that just after that this thing ended p's io for p0 has started okay so io for p0 has already started out here and after p1 is done we have io for p1 starting after that and then these ios can go in parallel okay and then this IO goes on for 90 milliseconds okay that means that if you started your IO out here it will go on up till uh, 100 like this okay this is the 100 milliseconds so this IO for P0 will go on up till here okay and then what about the IO of P1 so IO of P1 will go on up till what point let's say this point okay uh, 110 because this will also need 90 uh, 90 milliseconds from here okay and this is this is 20 okay I should write here 20 because this is 10 so this should be 20 so that's that's it okay and then when the IO of this P0 will be finished okay what it can do is it can get back to CPU and then uh, p1 will start once the IO of p1 is state so this thing will go on okay and what you have to see that for what time the CPU is idle so CPU is idle out here okay so this is the time when CPU is idle not doing anything so what is CPU utilization in this case so in this case the percentage of CPU utilization is how much so if you look at up till here as after this the same thing repeats okay p0 p1 and this thing so the cycle will repeat from here so th for this first hundred seconds you see that for t first 20 uh, seconds the uh, first 20 milliseconds the CPU is being utilized so it gives you the idea that it's 20 by 100 okay into 100 if you do so it gives you 20% so CPU utilization in this case is 20% that is first come first serve 
So I'm going to write it out here 20% utilization in first come first serve. And then let's talk about shortest remaining time first. Okay, so in this case, what happens is the one with the shortest remaining time gets priority, gets higher priority. Okay, so let's have this P0 and P1. And since the CPU burst is same for both of them, for both of them it is 10 milliseconds. And suppose P0 runs like this out here. Okay, and as it will run, it's remaining time will decrease but for p1 it's still 10 so obviously p0 will get this complete uh, 10 milliseconds okay and after that it will start io and p1 will get 10 milliseconds okay because it's uh, shortest remaining time okay and then the same thing so what happens is that in this particular example in this particular case shortest remaining time behaves just like first come first serve Okay, just think about it. Okay, P0 comes and um, okay, if uh, in the beginning both of them need the same time, so we give priority to someone, let's say P0 or P1, we can give it to anyone and it ran for 10 milliseconds and then P1 ran and then there was this waiting period and then again the same thing. So it doesn't behave different from, it doesn't behave differently from uh, first come first serve. So that means this one also gets 20%. What about static priority scheduling with different priorities of the two process? So it's again the same thing. Okay, if if in this particular case you will see that this static priority scheduling behaves the same way. This it's not different in this case also. Why? Suppose one of that one of them gets static priority. Static priority means the priority doesn't change, it remains the same. So if P0 got better priority, it will run for 10 and then P1 for 10, then this waiting period and then the same thing and it, it turns out that this one will also need just 20% okay there's 20% CPU utilization in this C case also and and then what is important is that this round robin scheduling okay by okay so by since you are given choices by elimination you can guess that this must be round robin and we'll, we'll see how that thing is true because we are going to see what happens in round robin so suppose I, I draw this uh, this thing again okay this is my timeline so I've drawn my timeline again and then uh, what we are going to do is we're going to start uh, round robin okay so this is round robin okay so this is round robin and time quantum is 5 millisecond okay so the the chunk of the chunk you give the time chunks you give are 5 millisecond 5 5 5 milliseconds okay so what will happen at 0 suppose you give 5 millisecond to p0 okay so 5 and then comes p1 okay so p0 cannot start it it's io right now can it no because it will start its io only after it has finished these 10 milliseconds of cpu bus okay so after that p1 runs for 5 milliseconds so this is 10 and then p0 runs okay so this is up till 15 okay now p0 can start its io because it has finished its 10 milliseconds so 5 out here and 5 out here 10 so now what we can have is uh, this thing we can have io for p0 okay and this can go on for how long next 90 milliseconds from here okay and then after this p1 gets and up till 20 p1 will run and then again p1 gets uh, p1 can start its io now from here on okay so now p1 can start its io and this will go on for another 90 millisecond so uh, when will the io of p0 finish from 90 milliseconds from here that means at 105 Okay, and at 110 the IO for P1 will finish because 90 from 20 will be 110 so and then what happens is once the IO of P0 is over out here then P0 can again get the CPU okay and then uh, the same thing starts again from here okay so the cycle is up till here and from here onwards the same thing is repeated okay so now what you see if you want to f write down the percentage CPU utilization out here so 
CPU is used for these first 20 milliseconds, that is true, but out of how much? 105, okay? In, in, in the case, in these earlier cases, we had 100 in the denominator because it was from this 100, but now it's from this 105, and if you will find this percentage, it is definitely going to be less than 20%. So, which means that the least CPU utilization is in the case of round-robin scheduling in, the, in this particular case.